Right, good morning. You can hear me okay at the back? Thank you very much, all right. That's at the front, not at the back. Law students have to learn to respond appropriately to commands. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to, uh, to the introductory talk today uh, about admissions process to the uh, Hong Kong U, law. For those that are interested, I hope, in the study of law. It's good to see so many of you here uh, today. It's good to see people here full stop after the experiences of recent years when we've had to do this on video, and it's not nearly as uh, interactive and engaging. So welcome. I hope that uh, today I, with my colleagues uh, and a couple of our students as well, can answer all the immediate questions you may have about studying law at uh, Hong Kong U Law uh, this coming year and in the immediate future. Uh, I'm Michael Jackson, as you can see. I'm the admissions tutor for the undergraduate programs, and I hope to answer all the immediate things that you would like to know. And then, as I said, my colleagues will talk about the joint programs that we have, and students will share with you their experiences in those programs. In my talk, uh, I'm going to cover three quick key questions for you. First, why study law at Hong Kong U Law? I'm going to talk about uh, us versus overseas and us versus other Hong Kong U law schools. I'm going to then ask uh, which program might be the one that's appropriate for you. We now offer uh, five programs at Hong Kong U and two programs which take you overseas at an undergrad level and a variety of other pathway programs. And I'll introduce them all. And as I said, we'll have colleagues who will speak specifically about those uh, joint programs to give you further uh, advice. And then some details about the application uh, process itself. Uh, we hope to leave time at the end for questions and answers. Uh, all of this has been, however, recorded. So if at any point you have to leave, or if you have, uh, know people who have been unable to attend today, they will be able to watch this online. The slides will also be uploaded, so you don't need to take your phone out and photograph things as we go through the process. All right, so let's uh, get started. First question, why study law at Hong Kong U? Perhaps some of you are, if you're the students, perhaps if you're their parents, are thinking of sending the students overseas or to other programs in Hong Kong. Why Hong Kong U Law then? Well, we believe we offer you a, a range of exceptional programs, first and foremost, meeting most of the needs of our uh, consumer community as such. First and foremost, our programs will equip you with knowledge, skills, ethical standards, creativity, and a sense of social responsibility. Uh, that is, after all, what law is. It's a social construct, as one of my colleagues says later, which helps us keep our society in order. And that gives responsibilities beyond the, the simple mechanical application of legal rules and legal principles itself. So this will stand you in good stead in the future. Indeed, whether you study law, you pursue a law ca career, or whatever else you may choose to do. Of course, all of our programs will educate you in the law and legal system of Hong Kong and prepare you, therefore, for professional practice as a solicitor or as a barrister in Hong Kong if that is presently your future plan or provide you with the legal knowledge for other uh, future routes that you may have uh, using your legal knowledge. Three years ago now, our faculty celebrated its 50th anniversary, so we have longevity. This gave us the opportunity to renew our faculty's dedication to law, justice, and humanity, which we regard as the founding principles of the faculty. So we take great pride in what we have achieved over the course of that now more than half a century. We believe we can offer you a sense of inclusion in our history and connection through us to a legal community made up of many of our graduates. So you would be welcomed as a graduate into a, a wide pool of graduates amongst the legal community in Hong Kong and beyond the legal community as well. Many in government, many in business, likewise have uh, exposure to study of law at Hong Kong U. Hong Kong U Law has dedicated leaders who have the vigor and the vision to take the faculty forward over the course of the next few years to confront the challenges that faces the faculty as it does, as do all faculties at Hong Kong U and uh, as will be the case during your time at Hong Kong U Law. And perhaps if I could just take the moment, the opportunity to introduce our current dean, uh, Professor Fu Hua Ling, who is here today, who will stay throughout. Uh, we're very proud to have him serving for us. He 
uh, exactly fulfills all the obligations and commitments we expect of a dean, as I said, with a vision and vigor, uh, despite <laughs> his uh, immediate parents. Vision and vigor. <laughs> Thank you. We have a commitment to excellence in the faculty. We strive to achieve excellence in terms of the teaching. We strive to achieve excellence in terms of the results that our students achieve, uh, both in their personal development, in their academic development, and in the leadership development that they acquire. It's clearly written into our undergraduate prospectus. I uh, hope you've all got a copy of that. It is available outside. It will be available online as well. So. Uh, do have a look at that. It's committed to academic professional excellence and it restates uh, what we believe to be the fundamental core principles of the faculty. We seek, therefore, not only to educate good lawyers, but to educate, as it says, leaders who have a passion to serve, uh, whatever path you ultimately may choose to take. Studying at Hong Kong New Law offers many benefits, we believe, compared to studying overseas, or elsewhere in Hong Kong. Firstly, uh, physically, we have excellent resources. Look around, you see the sort of facilities that we have. This is an annex to the uh, Cheng Yu Tong building, uh, which is in the center there, which is wholly dedicated to the faculty of law. So we have the administrative offices, the academic offices. Uh, we have facilities within which we can conduct our teaching activities. Uh, we have uh, rooms for student interaction, uh, for student association. Uh, we have alumni rooms. We have a, a, all the need facilities that we need. Below this facility, the theater we have here today, is the law library, which is equipped with all the immediate uh, ha hard copy needs you would have for studying law as such, although most of you, of course, will spend most of your time in law school on, online and using your computer. Uh, we are located here within the uh, faculty uh, in a, a quite beautiful part of the campus. Uh, if you've had a chance to look around, you'll see that we have gardens immediately behind us, that we have uh, pools with fish and turtles in it at the end here. Uh, so it's physically, it's a, a very pleasant, very welcoming part of the campus for you. The Hong Kong New Law has excellent international standing, and that's just on screen there, an indication of where we stand uh, within the international community. Uh, and generally, it's the case that we rank second in Asia, sadly uh, falling behind uh, the National University of Singapore's law school, uh, but otherwise retaining our international ranking. So we certainly are, are very proud of that, and it's something that you should take on board, that uh, students entering to the university are entering a prestigious law school amongst the very best in the world. Uh, some of you, perhaps, may have the opportunity to uh, travel overseas, to study law overseas. And perhaps your parents are considering that as an option. Uh, so just what are the benefits of studying in Hong Kong U, rather than taking the overseas option? Uh, there are a number of matters that are indicated. First and most obviously, uh, you will study Hong Kong law while you're at Hong Kong uh, law, unit, law in the Law Hong Kong Law program. Uh, if you plan to be a lawyer in Hong Kong in the future, then it is obviously a benefit to you to immerse yourself in Hong Kong law and be fully versed in it, uh, which would not be the case if you spend the bulk of your uh, legal study uh, dealing with English law or US law or Australian law or whatever else it may be. Uh, if you were to study overseas, then in order to access the local profession, you will need to uh, undertake conversion exams. So that would be an added period of study and time and potentially uncertainty uh, for you if you go overseas. Most of our graduates, of course, go directly into the PCLL, the Postgraduate Certificate in Laws, which is the compulsory one-year access program that you have to undertake and complete to get into the legal profession in Hong Kong. Cost, uh, you can see the relative cost of studying at Hong Kong U compared to an average cost uh, over three years for an international study. So if that is something that is of uh, relevance to where you choose to study, I think you can see that Hong Kong U offers a very cost-effective package for you, even though it is over four years compared to international study. But by joining Hong Kong U Law, you will, of course, uh, immerse yourself as a student in the common law 
legal system, uh, the unique system that retained in Hong Kong, as we know, is part of the one country, two systems uh, idea, whereas uh, the mainland studies or uh, law operates on a different foundational basis. Hong Kong U law continues to educate students in the common law, and this unites you with a common law family around the world. Uh, England as the origin of the common law system, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, Austra uh, US, uh, India, uh, Singapore, and so on. There's a whole community of uh, countries which follow the common law system. So you will, in the course of your study, uh, experience and understand the whole uh, range of common law subjects. But of course, you will also be exposed to Chinese law. So insofar as Hong Kong's future may depend upon its interactions with the mainland uh, in part, then you will expose yourself compulsory course in Chinese law and then the opportunity to undertake uh, a number of Chinese law electives, uh, many of which are taught by uh, teachers who originate or have originally studied in the mainland itself. So they are experts uh, in their own jur jurisdictional area. Ultimately, of course, uh, law and the legal profession is built on trust. The ability to trust your uh, uh, other lawyers and their, your interactions with them, trust within your uh, own relationships within a firm or within a uh, barrister's chambers, and ultimately trust on the part of your clients uh, about you. While you're at Hong Kong U, you will develop a network, a network of interactions with other prospective lawyers in the future, your classmates, and of course, you will also, through the opportunities you have to undertake mentoring with Hong Kong U Law graduates who are in the legal profession now, who provide their services to assist students with mentoring along the way, you will develop connections with the existing members of the community. Uh, this is just some of the members of the uh, Hong Kong U Law Alumni Network. You'll see uh, uh, happens to be we have Paul Lam, the Secretary for Justice currently, was a Hong Kong U graduate. So from the top down in the Hong Kong U government, we have Hong Kong U law graduates and then a number of other uh, distinguished members of the legal community, including some of our own graduates who remain amongst us as uh, teachers, such as Professor Albert Chen, the Cheng Cham Lam Yue Professor in uh, Constitutional Law and is a Basic Law Committee member. All right, so a wide array of persons across uh, the legal community and more widely within Hong Kong government and uh, politics itself. Why Hong Kong U Law, or, Hong Kong, or rather than uh, Hong Kong, uh, other Hong Kong law schools? We believe we, we offer you the greatest experience in terms of the teaching staff. All right, we have been here since 1969. We have vastly experienced the teachers and how to best communicate and teach students to the level that they need to be able to serve the community to the very best of their capabilities. Uh, we have expertise across a wider range of topics. You'll see the relative numbers of staff in the middle there. We have up to 80 staff on a fluctuating basis who therefore come from a variety of backgrounds, uh, who bring a variety of uh, perspectives, common law, civil law, within the common law and civil law communities, a variety of perspectives, and great expertise across most subject areas that students might be interested in. Uh, and that gives us a great deal of diversity amongst our teaching staff and also amongst our student body as well. We have some of our own graduates on staff. Uh, several of them, two of them here, have served as former deans of the faculty uh, of, Hong Kong U, of Hong Kong U Law, who've uh, studied, gone overseas, done further study, returned, and eventually served as dean of the faculty I've introduced you to the current dean already. We have other graduates who likewise have studied at Hong Kong U uh, Law, have gone overseas, pursued postgraduate qualifications, and returned to teach at Hong Kong U uh, Law and currently do so. So this is a array of uh, some of those that are currently continuing to teach at Hong Kong U Law. Uh, the first of those on the left of the top, Cora Chan, I just mentioned, we are conducting later today, for those of you that uh, are interested in law but are not quite sure what studying law might be like at a personal level. Perhaps you have not ever studied law and you wonder what we talk about in class and what you're expected to think about. Uh, Kora Chan will be conducting a mini lecture later today in this room 
at 2.30. I'll double check that. 3.30, I think it is. Sorry. Um, I've got a note of that later. I'll confirm later. Uh, 3.30, for those that might be interested in turning up, just to uh, interact with a, a University of Hong Kong uh, law professor and uh, find out whether it seems to be the sort of thing that is engaging uh, your interest. All right. So graduates on staff, we have a variety of distinguished uh, and honorary visiting honorary professors that regularly visit, some regularly, some teach whole courses in short times while they're with us, others, others uh, visit and do presentations. Uh, it's part of a regular program, and happily it's one that, of course, is now uh, been revived and fully revitalized after the difficulties created by the pandemic in having visitors uh, at all to Hong Kong U. So you will be exposed during the course of your study to distinguished uh, professors, uh, law professors from overseas, have an opportunity to interact with them uh, and not just uh, be, uh, spend the time with the current teaching staff at Hong Kong U. We also have a number of features of our program we believe are very important in terms of uh, offering students more than just a straightforward law degree, and that is uh, firstly to give you the opportunity to actually engage in uh, a form of legal practice through the Clinical League Education Program. We are under the supervision of, uh, of uh, active members of the legal profession. You can participate with real clients, real cases, some of which have gone to uh, court, for example, and involved submissions in court, uh, as well as those that deal specifically with refugees and the concerns that they encounter. And this is an opportunity for you as a student to, to step outside the academic classroom into the reality of serving clients with the difficulties of communication, with the uncertainties of what their problem actually is, uh, with trying to figure out a solution when it's not simply an academic solution to them. So that's something that we offer. We offer pathway programs with a number of overseas institutions. You'll see the University of New South Wales, uh, with Singapore, in the US and Singapore, with King's College London, with UC Berkeley, uh, pathway programs to master's uh, degrees with those, uh, those entities. We also offer, you'll see, double degree programs with some of our overseas partners. And you've got the details set out there. So these are uh, to topics or matters you can investigate more fully on our website to get details of exactly what that entails. The idea is we try to offer our students as much as possible the opportunity to do more than just study Hong Kong law at Hong Kong U Law, but to engage interactively with the world in a more global community in which we now exist. And to the same effect, we offer exchange opportunities to our students regularly. Of course, this has been not so easy to do over the course of the last year or two. I'm sure you understand why that may be the case, but we believe this is now getting fully back into process. We offer over 200 of our students a year an opportunity to go on exchange, either for a semester or in some instances a full year, uh, and the courses that they complete while overseas will be credited towards their law degree here uh, without the grades themselves having to be credited. So you're not at risk of worsening your GPA uh, from undertaking courses overseas when you might not, might not be familiar with the background law in the jurisdiction we are studying, for example. And you see, we have a very diverse range of countries, from the obvious ones, the, the ones that students like perhaps or think of most naturally, Oxford, Cambridge, and London, through US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, to Israel, some of the Scandinavian countries. Uh, students are interested, for example, in international law, might find themselves going to the Netherlands, where they have the opportunity perhaps to actually visit, engage in activities at The Hague and so on, to places like this. Right. As well, we each year, again, something that we are uh, reviving, uh, bring in a number of students on exchange from overseas. So they will sit in elective classes usually, so in your senior years, more senior years, you'll have a chance to interact with students from a number of overseas jurisdictions, many of whom, of course, because of the nature of the study of law overseas, may be considerably older than our own students. And it gives you a chance to interact with students who are perhaps a little bit more senior, got slightly different life experiences to your own. So that is a brief overview of some of the features of the programs of law we offer, the Hong Kong U Law as such. Uh, sorry, what of Hong Kong U Law as such. Which program? 
the second question asked, which program is the one that uh, is for you? Our basic degree is the LLB. This is a four-year program. Uh, it offers you maximum flexibility. It enables you to do law specialization. It enables you to do uh, minors outside the law faculty. So if you uh, are minded mostly to want to study law, but to also uh, have the opportunity to explore your interests, your academic interests outside law, then this is the, the program that offers you the, the greatest flexibility to achieve that. It's also, in a sense, the program within which it's easier to go on exchange. Uh, you can make it, in it's more flexible in that sense. You'll see we have two additional programs, two double degree LL programs with overseas partners. Uh, the first of these is a four year program with the University College London. All right? And the result of this, that a student after four years will graduate with an LLB degree from both Hong Kong U Law and from uh, UCL itself. So you'll have an LLB in both jurisdictions. But this is a program with a very limited intake. You'll see we have five from Hong Kong U side and five from uh, the UCL side. And I'll mention applications to this and give more details about this program a little bit later. We also have a program for those that uh, are considering or see value in uh, studying mainland law during the course of their legal studies, a program with uh, Peking University, uh, which is five years long, at which a student will spend two and a half years at each university. Uh, whereas the UCL program, you spend your first two years at UCL, and then you return to Hong Kong U to complete your later uh, elective years. The Hong Kong U, Peking U program, you can begin at either end. You can begin at Hong Kong U and spend two and a half years, or at Peking U and spend two and a half years, and then you swap halfway through. Again, a limited intake to this program. We will have students from both of these programs who will be available later to share briefly their experiences and possibly ask question, answer questions you may have of them. We also, as I said, offer pathway programs with a number of uh, overseas institutions in which you will obtain two degrees, and you'll see they include an LLM in three instances and a JD in the case of a pathway program with the University of British Columbia in Canada. So that will provide you with access to the Canadian legal profession upon completion of that. But they are uh, variously four or five years, depending on the actual mix of the program. In addition to that, we have what we call our integrated double degree programs. So these are undergraduate programs. Uh, the first of these is a program offered with the Faculty of Arts, the BA and LLB. So if you as a student have, have a passion for literature, uh, but you see that that might not offer you as wide a prospect of a career as law, or perhaps your parents are minded that way, then you can potentially continue your interest by uh, uh, getting permission from your parents and applying for this program to enter the BA and LLB. And we have a teaching staff member from the English school who will speak briefly about this program, again, to give you further introduction to it. We have a BBA Law and LLB program, so students who are interested in uh, continuing or pursuing studies in the business world, and this includes the possibility of a major in accountancy or a major in business studies as part of the program, uh, they may take that option. And we have a faculty, the Hong Kong U Law program director, to speak to this. Most of these programs, these faculties, will have their own, the arts, the uh, uh, business school, the social science, and the faculty of science have their own admission talks later, and so you may have the opportunity to, to attend there and hear uh, about the program from the other side of the perspective. We have a program with the faculty of social sciences, in particular with the Department of Politics and Public Administration, offering the BSOC SI, Government and Laws, and LLB. And this is traditionally a pathway for students who might be interested in going into the government, who might be going into sometimes slightly more uh, wider, widely arranged programs such or careers such as journalism, where they see a value in understanding a bit about law and politics afoot in both in the future. And then the uh, newer program, the Bachelor of Science in LLB, which we uh, started this current year. We have, uh, I think it's uh, 13 students admitted to the program this year. And this was introduced, and I'll have a short video from our Hong Kong U Law's program director on this, he unfortunately can't be here, to talk about this, was introduced to ensure that students who have perhaps spent many years uh, dedicated to the study of science 
who have a passion for science are not uh, unable to pursue that once they come to Hong Kong U. And indeed, that there are very real reasons, if that is your passion, to continue uh, to consider possibly a uh, joint integrated uh, degree that that offers to you. So I won't add too many details. The program directors will speak about those after I've finished. Uh, in terms of which program, we also offer a number of postgraduate programs uh, which are set out here. The PCLL I've mentioned, this is the compulsory one-year professional qualification exam after you've completed your LLB. So whether you do a four-year LLB or a five-year uh, integrated degree at Hong Kong, you, you will still have to do an additional year. Uh, and that is the year uh, when you learn to practice like a lawyer rather than think like a lawyer in some respects, which is what the LLB is uh, oriented more towards. So that you can move uh, more with uh, greater ease into the actual real life practice as a solicitor, a trainee solicitor, or as a pupil in a barrister's chambers, if those are the choices you make for your future. Obviously, we also offer the master's programs. We offer also advanced postgraduate degrees. And for those of you that perhaps have already got a degree, not in law, or perhaps are interested in pursuing another degree initially, wholly, we do offer a program to come back and study law, the uh, JD, the Juris Doctor. And so this follows the North American, uh, the US, and US program, where you spend two years then uh, studying law before you're qualified to take the PCLL. The application process uh, is one, of course, which is uh, the, what many students are most interested in. The slides will try to give you some uh, guidance on what we expect of you, what we're looking for. Uh, first, what sort of students is Hong Kong U Law interested in? Well, whether it's applying through the DUPAS route, through a non-DUPAS route, the same broad criteria will apply to you in terms of what we're overall looking for. Uh, we're looking for students with good communication skills, with good intellectual skills, with good analytical skills. But more than that, we're looking for applicants with a sense of justice, uh, who value integrity, and who understand that lawyers in Hong Kong have a deep and abiding responsibility, as I've already said, for maintaining the legal profession and the rule of law in Hong Kong. If that sounds like you, then that's the sort, you are the sort of student, the sort of applicant we're interested in. But I and you, also have to be realistic. Admission to our undergraduate programs is very competitive. <laughs> All right. The reality is that you will need very good academics to compete with others. You will need to uh, be able to demonstrably show your proficiency in English because ultimately words are the tools of law and lawyers. We spend our life reading words, whichever language they're in, expressing ourselves, communicating, discussing, debating. It's all about uh, words, and the majority of it we do in English. We interview non-DUPAS applicants as a matter of course, and also now some uh, DUPAS applicants, uh, rather late in the cycle of DUPAS application process, so that we can meet you, so that we can, if we think there's any issues, verify your English proficiency, and also so we can judge whether we believe you are the sort of student with the leadership, the uh, uh, innovation, the creativity, uh, the ability to respond and communicate well, which we are looking for within the law program. Uh, when you fill in an application form F to study at Hong Kong U, uh, you're given a number of choice of the degree programs. You may know that already. As a rule of thumb, if you wish to be considered for admission to our LLB, or other double degree law programs, you need to make our LLB, LLB degree or whichever other of the LLB related programs you're interested in, you need to make it your first choice. Those are the students that we give priority to and who mostly fill the places ultimately that we uh, have available to us. The application process, uh, DUPAS applicants, you'll be pleased to hear, we strive to continue to admit 70% of our intake from the DUPAS applicant pool. Uh, you have to, of course, achieve as a DUPAS applicant uh, necessary minimum grades for eligibility to Hong Kong U, but be aware, of course, uh, that the actual grades that you will likely need for admission to the LLB or any of the other integrated double degrees are much higher. 
And as uh, I indicate, the next slide will give you some indication of the level that you'll need to achieve. Uh, for non GPS applicants, uh, depending on what background you come from, what your program is, you have indication there of what we would normally expect to see uh, to uh, be able to make an offer to you. Certainly to make a conditional offer to you at an early stage after interview. So excluding English and Chinese, if you're doing uh, the A-level, GCEA levels, uh, if you're doing four A-level subjects, we would expect one A star and three A's as a minimum. If you're only doing three A-level subjects, we would normally expect two A stars and one A as a minimum. So sadly, we do have high uh, standards. It is a positive thing for us because it means we have very high quality applicants. But it does mean, from a student's perspective, you are in competition with other excellent students. For if you're studying the IB, uh, then you will need generally to have 37 out of 42, so excluding the, uh, the bonus points uh, that you get. Or if we do take account of your bonus points, 40 out of the 45 total that you can get. Plus, of course, and otherwise, in other respects, satisfying the university entrance requirements for minimum, the minimum requirements for eligibility, sorry, university eligibility requirements in that regard. Uh, you can get in more information about some of this, these details in the, in the prospectus. But this is an indication for you, for DUPIS applicants, of the uh, uh, average, uh, you'll see results of the best six subjects across the range of programs that the LLB uh, the, the Hong Kong U contributes to. This is the average, so it's not the minimum. Uh, right? For example, for the LLB this year, uh, we generally were able to admit students who achieved a score of 33 or above. So while 37 is the average, 33 was the score available. And in some instances, we've conducted interviews and given students bonus points to help them reach the 33 score. So if you are close to that, uh, you are likely to be offered an interview sometime late in the admissions process. Uh, and if you do well on that, you can score a bonus point. Uh, that is, I should say, the low point 33, lower than we have had the luxury of for many years. It partly reflects, I think, the difficulties that uh, DUPAS applicants have encountered over the course of the last few years in Hong Kong with their teaching and learning. Uh, you have not been able to interact in classroom in many instances or not fully. That has affected the level that you have been able to achieve in your exam process. And we don't believe it fully reflects your actual likely academic ability. So we try to uh, accommodate those students by a little bit more stretch than in previous years. And then you'll see that the other programs likewise have similar if not higher admission uh, standards for uh, DUPIS applicants. This sets out some of the uh, details, the more details about the UCL program. I think there's three slides which do this. As I've said, it is uh, for those that might be interested in this program, uh, a four-year dual degree program, two years at UCL, two years at Hong Kong U, uh, only five from each institution, ten in total. Uh, you pay the relevant fees of each institution, so that will be more costly than four years at Hong Kong U uh, because you will have to pay for two years at UCL. If you're a Hong Kong U LLB student and you go on exchange, the nature of the exchange agreement is that you only pay Hong Kong U fees so that there is a benefit <laughs> to, for parents in that sense. And for any parents, that's an important benefit. But as I said, this program will ultimately produce uh, an LLB in each jurisdiction. So you will have a, an undergraduate qualification in law, both in, under English law and in Hong Kong law. And either way, you will have completed all the subjects you will need for admission to the PCLL program, subject, of course, to actually application succeeding. Uh, the application process is done both via DUPAS and the non-DUPAS application system. And you'll see that if you're a DUPAS applicant, you will have to apply separately through the Faculty of Law online application system to essentially notify us to make us aware that you are interested in this system so that we can take account of that at an early stage in the process. Or you can apply to UCL through the UCAS system, but you'll see you cannot apply through both. So the system is designed so that if you try to apply through both, you'll essentially be locked out of the system. So you can apply through one, but not both of them. All right, the LNAT 
the legal uh, national assessment test, aptitude test, will be required. Uh, sorry, is, is required if you go through the UCAS system. It's an additional requirement. You have to attend the relevant uh, premises in Hong Kong where you can undertake that. It's uh, an essay and multiple choice test that you have to com uh, complete. If you apply to Hong Kong U, then that requirement is waived. We admit you as an LLB student from year one, although you will then go to UCL in year one and commence your studies there. All right, you'll see further details about uh, needing to place Hong Kong ULLB uh, in your band A choice for DUPAS or first choice, particularly if you're a non-DUPAS applicant. Uh, and that details, as I said, you can verify later if you need to. The slides will be uploaded and there's further information on the, uh, the screen, uh, on the uh, website. Uh, these are the deadlines. You'll see the immediate deadline is quite soon, of course, for non-DUPAS applicants. The first application deadline within the application process to Hong Kong U this year, 16th of November, so it's only a couple of weeks away now. Uh, for DUPAS students, the 7th of December uh, and the 15th of January uh, for faculty online applications. This is for UCL, Hong Kong U applicants, right? And additional details are set out there. Noting that you will be invited if you're shortlisted for interview, and that will be taken up by us and, uh, and activated for us, uh, for you to be contacted. The Peking U program, just put a bit more details. As I said, this is a five-year dual degree program with students two and a half years at Hong Kong U, the last or vice versa, depending on where you commence your study. Uh, I believe we have two students later, one who's commenced at Hong Kong U, one who's commenced at Peking U, and they will just share their experiences. Limited quota, again, you pay the tuition fee to the relevant host institution, and you will again obtain an LLB degree from each institution. Uh, of course, in this context, you receive a common law uh, degree from Hong Kong U and a civil law-based degree for the degree awarded by Peking U. So you'll be uh, versed in Chinese law, uh, and then you'll be in a position to apply to take the bar exam that lawyers, would-be lawyers, take in, in the PRC. All right. Either way, you will have completed, again, all the courses you will need to complete in order to be able to uh, apply to the PCLL, but subject to application. Uh, the additional details there, uh, depending on the nature of your application, particularly if you are a, uh, uh, turn out to be a mainland applicant applying on the strength of Gaokao, then you'll need to apply via the Peking U system, but others can apply uh, through DUPAS and non-DUPAS uh, routes respectively. All right, so those details available. Uh, there are a number of special Notes on eligibility that I've set out here, which you can look at if you're interested in the program uh, later on the website when this is uploaded uh, for you. The deadline for faculty online applications, you'll see uh, for this program, the Peking U dual program is the 15th of January. So a little bit more time for those that might be interested. Obviously, because you will at some point have to spend two and a half years in, at Peking University, you will have to be highly proficient in spoken and written Chinese. So that is obviously a consideration if you're interested in this program. All right, and then finally, these are just generally, as I've indicated, the initial dates uh, that are important to you for the process here. Uh, today is the information day, of course, and then a series of additional dates, some of which are, uh, uh, will be uh, posing upon us quite, quite soon. Okay, so thank you. I look forward to hopefully receiving many of you in September 2024. So what I want to do now uh, is delete this. Uh, and uh, now where do I find? No. <laughs> Sorry, where do I find the, uh, where have you placed the other materials, please? To find it here. Here it is, this one to uh, get going. So this is a short presentation relating to the Bachelor of Science and LLB degree by a, the Faculty of Law, the Hong Kong U Laws Program Director. As I've indicated, the science faculty will also be conducting a program, uh, an admissions talk on this later. So let me get this underway. Hopefully this is going to work. Sound, sound please. I need sound to be activated on the, uh, the screen here. This is activated here. 
who's uh, responsible, please, for making sure that we can hear Ryan's words. Why of not hearing it, please? Technical staff. <laughs> I was assured this was going to work. Have I not uploaded the correct thing? No, 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 we checked it. Following, following this presentation, we'll then have short talks by first uh, the uh, Nicholas Look from the School of English, then followed by presentations by uh, Hong Kong New Law staff uh, relating to the BBA law and the uh, government and laws programs. Is that not the correct one? Yeah. That is. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Not going to work? Yes, no, no, sorry. All right, while rather than that, let's reorganize it. So, Nicholas, um, if I can invite on stage, Nicholas Look from the School of English, who will just do a short presentation. He doesn't have any technical requirements. Uh, as an English teacher, he's going to talk to you, <laughs> which is good, uh, about the BA and LLB program. So he will hopefully remain available should you have questions about it while the technical staff sort out the technical needs. Thanks. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming along to our prospective new students. Uh, my name is Nicholas Luke uh, from the School of English, um, Deputy Director of the BA LLB program or the, the Law and Literary Studies program. And I'm just going to say a little bit about that today. It's a five-year program at the end of which you end up with two degrees, a Bachelor of Arts, a BA, and a Bachelor of Laws, an LLB. So you'll take the law courses just like any other law student, but in addition, you'll be able to choose subjects from English literature, Chinese literature, comparative literature, also linguistics, uh, translation studies, and, and actually quite a few other, other options as well. One of the premises of the dual degree um, is that both law and literary studies are deeply involved in analyzing texts, interpreting texts. And there, of course, these texts can be very different, legal texts or imaginative literature, like poems or films or novels. Uh, but there's a significant overlap in the skills of analysis and interpretation and also in communicating that analysis, whether orally or in writing. So I think the, the, the program would suit students who are particularly interested in language, how it works, how to interpret it, uh, how to construct an argument, and, and students who love reading, essentially. I think there's also a host of other benefits in studying the two programs together. Not least, you'll be joining a small but very talented, very active, and collegiate group of students. Um, it's, a, it's a great little community we've got going in the BALB. Practically, it allows you to explore a wider range of subjects than you would in a, in a straight law, law degree as well. So you can explore a wider range of ideas, writings, um, and subjects than in any single degree, which I think keeps it interesting. Uh, you, can become, you can be curious and wide-ranging in your studies. You, you get a nice variety. I think it also allows you to improve your writing. Um, and I, I did a BA LLB dual degree uh, back in my undergraduate days, and it certainly helped me, I think, um, because I think the, the law side of things helps you to really hone the structuring um, and to, to tighten your writing, essentially, whereas the art side gives you a bit more scope for creativity, for exploring imagination and effect. But both are based on close analysis of texts um, and working out the nuances of the meanings of language. So there's a lot of cross-fertilization between the two as well. As BA LLB students, you're members of both the Faculty of Arts and Law, so you get the benefits of both, including kind of internships, including foreign exchange, uh, clubs and societies, and so forth. But you also get some tailored programs that are specific only to BA LLB students, uh, particularly in the final year of, of the program. So we have students uh, doing internships in law firms, but also in creative industries. They're going into galleries or performing arts companies, um, publishing companies, government agencies, NGOs, and so forth. So that, that, that's on offer as well as what you get through the faculties of law and arts. 
Uh, this, I think, suggests that the dual degree program opens up a wide ar array of career opportunities. Um, this is because you're combining in-demand skills of rigorous legal training with creativity and communication. So we have students of ours going, becoming barristers or solicitors, but we also have students of ours who move into academia, journalism, uh, creative industries, and the arts. I think one of the unique things about our BALB program here is that it allows students to take tailored law and literature specific courses that combine the two disciplines. And this is not something that, that many universities offer. So the first one you'll do is called Introduction to Law and Literary Studies, uh, which is run by one of our program directors, Anya Adair. Anya has won a number of uh, teaching awards lately, so she's a great uh, engaging teacher to sort of introduce you to this cross-disciplinary world. So that course explores how literary studies can be brought into conversation with the law, and this includes looking at how the law is represented in great literature. We call that the law uh, in literature approach. But it also includes looking at how strategies for reading developed in literary studies can be used to assess legal texts and concepts. This is called the law as literature approach. Essentially, legal texts, just like literary texts, often rely on employing narrative, fictions, and rhetorical devices. So for, ex for example, in, in a courtroom, you may have two competing strands of narrative, um, uh, prosecution and defense, and we can look at how they're constructed and uh, how, how we're to judge between them. We might also think about how uh, both law and literature conceptualize questions of justice. That's something I try to do in, in a course that I teach on Shakespeare and the law. Uh, Shakespeare employs um, a, a wide range of legal terms, uh, ideas, and procedures in his drama. And, and his works are then uh, referenced in many legal judgments and legal theories as well. So the, the influence goes both ways. So in that course, in the first part, we, I look at uh, the interrelationships between language, law, and power in one of Shakespeare's kind of brutal history plays, Henry VI, uh, Henry VI Part Two, which is incidentally famous for the rebel cry, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. So that's an interesting one to sort of tackle in a law and literature, concept, in law and literature context, uh, thinking about the, the borderlines between order and, and disorder and chaos. And the second part looks at how law and legal reasoning, for instance, early modern concepts of inference, uh, suspicion, and intention, what we might call forensic rhetoric, uh, are utilized by Shakespeare in helping to create one of his most famous characters, uh, Prince Hamlet. So that's a very brief sketch of what we do uh, in the BA LLB program. But if you have any questions, uh, I'll be around afterwards. So please do come and ask. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Nicholas. Uh, as he said, it is a tight, relatively small group. We admit uh, up to 20 students. I think we admitted 16 this year. They all, of course, are passionate about their interest in literature, and that binds them together. And it's something that is uh, for consideration of that may be you as a student. Uh, we now have, hopefully, I'm told, the short uh, video on science and uh, LLB, if this is your interest. There we go.
we can bring that to market. And the world needs more patent attorneys who understand economics. And the scientific world needs more scientists who understand economics. So a program like this will equip graduates to occupy that intersection of these two areas. Now, patent law is just one area. There's, there's actually uh, there's many, many more. For instance, uh, the areas of forensic science, How do we want to get rid of that? Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Ryan. Um, if that might be of your interest, then as I said, there is a, I believe, a presentation uh, within the Faculty of Science later today. I think it's 2.30 uh, for those that are possibly interested in a further admissions talk there. I now like to invite on stage the uh, Hong Kong U Laws uh, Deputy Program Director of the BBA Law and LLB Program to just do a short presentation on uh, what essentially are the differences between an LLB degree and this joint degree program. Jackie Yuan. Morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jackie. I'm a, I'm a lecturer here as well as uh, the Deputy Program Director of the BBA Law Program. If you eventually enter into the actual law school, you are going to see me because I'm also the first year experience coordinator. Now, I understand that the Faculty of Business and Economics, also known as the HKU Business School, has, has arranged another admission talk specifically for the BBA law program. So um, in order not to duplicate uh, the information involved, what I am going to do here in the upcoming five or 10 minutes would be to introduce some essential differences between the single LB program uh, with the BBA law program. Because when considering entering into the law school, a lot of you may think, well, whether I should spend a year more in order to complete another business degree. So I'm going to show you some figures and numbers so that you may consider when applying for uh, our law programs, whether you should apply for the single degree program or whether you should apply for the BBA law program. Now, these slides shows you the, the essential differences between the LLB program as well as the BBA law program. Now, of course, uh, if you are going to do the single LLB program, you are going to spend four years doing the single LLB program. But bear in mind that it doesn't mean that you are going to study law only. That is because even within our single LLB program, you will have some what we call free electives. Let's say if you're interested in psychology, you have a chance to do introduction to psychology. Right? So just because you are going to do the single LB program, it doesn't mean that you have to study law only. Right? But what about the BBA law program here? Now, for the BBA law program, you are going to spend an extra year doing some extra business courses. And eventually, if you choose to complete the entire uh, program within five years, at the end of the day, you are going to be awarded with both the Bachelor of Laws together with a business uh, Bachelor of Business and Administration in the specification you choose, right? Now, one of the common, commonly asked questions or frequently asked questions from students is that, well, by doing a five-year double degree program, whereas you're, you're going to spend four years doing a single LB degree program, does it mean that I'll study less law subjects if I choose the 
uh, double degree program? As you can see here, the answer is no. So in terms of the number of law courses you are going to study, they are the same. So you still have to do those 26 uh, law courses as specified in the program syllabus, right? Um, in terms of the tuition fee, there is a slight difference. Now, if you are a GPS applicant, the tuition fee for the LB program for, uh, from first year to the last year, the fourth year, would be uh, $42,100. Right, being the UGC funded price, right? But if you are going to do the BBA law double degree program, um, you are going to pay the same tuition fee for the first four years. But then for the very last year, it's going to be what we call self-finance, right? And with reference to the figure uh, from the previous cohort, that amount would be uh, $85,000 $85, uh, per year in your last year, that is the fifth year. Now, just now I mentioned that uh, of course, eventually, if you choose to study the BBA law program, at the end of the day, you are going to get both a BBA together with a LLB, right? But in terms of uh, the components, or in terms of the majors of a BBA, you may choose among the following majors. So we have professional accounting, uh, entrepreneurship, design and innovation, finance, human resources management, information system and analytics, together with marketing. And in the upcoming slides, I'm going to show you how the business structure or the business side of the programs may be different among these majors. Now, as you could imagine, if you choose to study both um, LLB together with BBA in accounting, being the professional subjects, uh, we, we do have to fulfill some requirements set out by uh, the professional bodies, like the law societies um, or the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So, we will have very limited choices in terms of the electives available because you have to fulfill those professional requirements, right? So on the left, you'll be able to see the core structures uh, for the business courses if you choose to study um, the accounting major. In contrast, if you choose to study other business majors, uh, you may say that you have greater flexibilities in terms of the number of courses or the variety of courses you can choose, right? So the only differences between the BBA law accounting program and uh, the BBA law uh, program majoring in other business areas would be uh, the second row here, as you can see. You are going to do more business courses for the accounting major in order to fulfill those professional requirements. Right, and from what I understand, uh, based on my experience in the previous years, a lot of you are interested in exchange programs, right? So. If you choose our double degree program, well, you may say that you may have greater flexibility in terms of your uh, exchange of arrangement, ex exchange of arrangements, right? So, now, let me just introduce that further. At HKU, we have exchange programs organized at the university level, as well as at the faculty level, right? So if you are going to be our BBA law uh, students, you will be attached to both uh, the HKU Business School together with the law faculty. Meaning that, well, you will have probably three different forums for you to choose uh, to apply for the exchange program. So you have, uh, the, you have the HKU University level exchange program available. Uh, you may also apply through the business faculty or you may apply through the law faculty, right? So for further details about the exchange programs, you may scan the QR code here, and then it will direct you to the HKU Exchange website where you can get further information. Right? And I understand that these PowerPoint will be uploaded after the emission, the emission talk, so just in case you're not going to do that now, you may do it after uh, when you have got the PowerPoint slides with you. Okay, and other frequently asked questions from students who are interested in BBA law uh, program is that, well, by choosing the BBA law program, does it mean that I am bound to be a corporate lawyer or am I, am I bound to uh, enter into, let's say the financial or compliance view? The answer is no, right? So of course, uh, as I said, you eventually you are going to uh, study all those law courses uh, in the same way similar to um, those who are doing the LB program. So, in terms of the number of courses or in terms of those core courses, uh, the BBA law program and the LB program are essentially the same. Now, of course, by choosing, the LB, uh, by choosing the BBA law program, you may be more interested 
in business related subjects. But just in case, let's say in the middle of your study, you find that, well, business or uh, finance law is not your cup of tea, it doesn't matter. We do offer a lot of other uh, electives or what we call disciplinary electives, meaning that they are still electives over within the law school for law students. So you may choose subjects like um, human rights, um, clinical legal education. So you are not bound to study law related to business and finance. Now, if you are interested in knowing what electives are available, again, you may scan the QR code here and then this will lead you to the entire course list offered by our faculty. The last question is, well, what about the career options? Um, if I choose to be, uh, or if I graduate from this BBA law and LB program, does it mean that I have to be a commercial attorney or does it mean that I have to uh, be a solicitor working or practicing in the corporate practice? Now, of course, if you're interested in that area, you may do so. But again, you're not bound by our program, right? So from time to time, we have a lot of graduates being uh, something, well, uh, and entering into the profession or other occupations rather, uh, other than being a commercial attorney, right? So here are some options. So of course, you can be a solicitor or barrister practicing in other areas like family law or criminal law, right? And from time to time, we have uh, graduates entering into the graduate trainees or management trainee programs of various uh, multinational corporations, right? We also have students eventually entering into the investment banks to become graduate analysts. And from time to time, we have students entering into government, either as administrative officers, um, legal officers, including government counsel, provided that you have completed your peace arrow training. And then uh, some of you may even become law enforcement officers. And apart from that, we, we also have a number of students uh, starting their own uh, business uh, entities. So they, they became founders of various uh, startup companies, right? And some, some, are, some other students may be interested in a particular areas of law, let's say uh, humanitarian law, and they eventually became uh, officers or managers with, uh, with those NGOs working on those fields. And of course, uh, some of us may eventually join the academia and become law teacher or professors. Right, so um, that's it for my short presentation. And I'm going to pass the floor to Dr. Eric Gibb to introduce the government and law program. Thank you. Morning. My name is Eric Ip. Uh, I'm the director of the Government Laws Program from the Faculty of Law. The combined study of law and politics at Hong Kong U has a long and distinguished history that can be traced back to 1924. Today, the G Laws Program is jointly taught by our prestigious politics department and the Faculty of Law. Both departments are respected worldwide for their teaching and research. According to the QS University Rankings 2022, the politics department at, at Hong Kong U ranks 35 in the world, not just in Asia, but in the world. Similarly, Hong Kong U law ranked 20th globally. So what does that mean for G lawyers? It means that Hong Kong U G laws is one of the most competitive undergraduate degree programs in public affairs all over the world. It is taught by two world-class schools, its alumni have done really well in many different fields, as we shall see later. GLO's students are able to receive a highly affordable, world-class education in law and public affairs from two world-class departments on your doorstep. So why study government and laws? A GLO's education spans across many different fields from political philosophy to international relations, and from comparative politics to public administration, and from public law to private law. So these subjects are very good instruments to develop your analytical skills. 
They will equip you with the crucial ability to examine important political and legal concepts and issues and strengthen your ability to understand and cope with uncertainty in law, politics, and in international relations. This is a portrait of the great Greek philosophers Plato and Aristotle, who massively influenced the study of law and politics in the next few uh, centuries, ne next few thousand years. Uh, now, uh, you may ask our experts in political theory, what is democracy? What is social justice? And what is a good life? And whether you wish to develop your career in Hong Kong or elsewhere, it would be a great idea for you to learn uh, Chinese and US foreign policy from our very strong group of international relations professors. The politics gives rise to laws and laws shape and constrain the development of politics. Understanding law and politics would give you skills that are transferable to almost every career path that you may choose. So you may get the impression that Hong Kong U government laws is a double degree. But this is only partially correct. The four year and five year tracks are equally viable and respected. An outstanding feature of the GLAWS program is that actually there are two tracks that students may choose from after their enrollment. So every student admitted into GLAWS will, be, will by default be enrolled into the five year double degree track. Students study a very structured law program every semester and this would result in an LLB degree in addition to a government and laws degree. For instance, years four and five would be dedicated to relatively demanding professional courses like equity and trusts, commercial law, and business associations. But there will be G lawyers who later think that they are just not interested in becoming solicitors or barristers at all. When that happens, they don't need to feel despair. They don't need to consider quitting Hong Kong U altogether. Instead, they can conveniently switch into the flexible four-year track at the end of their second year after they've already studied a number of core courses in both public and private law. They will be able to make informed decisions by the end of their second year. So if they switch to the flexible four-year track upon successful completion, it will result in the award of a prestigious Bachelor of Social Sciences in Government and Laws degree with double majors, double majors in politics and legal studies. So yes, the degree remains officially called a Government and Laws degree. The, the word laws is inside the, the name of the degree, even if one opts out of the LLB. Over the years, G lawyers pursued all sorts of further studies uh, and careers from business and public health to law and international relations or embark on diverse non-law career paths in such fields as academic research, banking, business, education, public service, aviation, uh, 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 the non-profit sector, and even music and entertainment. So we at Hong Kong U are committed to helping you achieving your dreams. So many of our graduates pursued advanced study, such as masters and PhD studies in world leading universities, such as Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, UCL, and so on. So for those who choose to remain on the five-year track, upon graduation, they will receive both a BSS in Government and Laws degree and a Bachelor of Laws LLB degree, which is a prerequisite for applying for a place on the famous PCLL program, which in turn is a prerequisite for anyone who wants to practice law 
as a solicitor or barrister in Hong Kong. Our alumni have been employed in almost every major legal institution in Hong Kong, both private and public. So we will apply the best six formula to gauge your DSE results, calculating scores according to category A in the most recent 2022 intake, the upper quartile was 43 for Drupas, the median was 39, and the lower quartile was 38. Around 20% of our first year students are non Drupas students. So there will be no interviews for Drupas applicants, but interviews may be held for non Drupas applicants depending on the exact case in question. This will be decided by the Program Admissions Committee, but our predominant concern is academic merit. Regarding Drupas, only applicants who placed JS6810 government laws into band A would be admitted. So all those who placed us in band B or below had been rejected in the past. So I would strongly encourage you to place G laws into your band A choices, which may make a huge difference. For instance, in the most recent intake, no less than half of applicants who placed us in band A were admitted. So overall, G laws is an extremely flexible program. You can earn as many as two prestigious university degrees in just five years. So in Hong Kong, one undergraduate degree lasts for four years, but uh, in our double degree programs, you can earn two degrees in five years. Our program suits the needs of students who wish to know more about the law, even though they have no plans to practice law as well as the needs of students who, who want to practice law, but are also deeply interested in public affairs and social sciences subjects ranging from psychology to sociology to anthropology. Uh, so this afternoon, I I'm going to give a, a much more detailed admissions talk on GLOS together with the Faculty of Social Sciences at 1.30 p.m. at room 258 on the second floor of the Jockey Club Tower nearby. Uh, a graduate and two current students will also share their perspectives on the program and answer questions. So please scan this QR code for more details. Finally, uh, we've produced a brochure for GLAWS which contains a lot of interesting information about our program such as a number of testimonials from current and former students. Please scan this QR code to download the brochure, but uh, I think a hard copy is also available today uh, at the Faculty of Social Sciences. And thank you very much. Right, thank you to my colleagues for their uh, sharing. Those of you that uh, are still here, I know some of you may have questions and we'll try to be available to answer questions at the end. But before that, it's important also to hear from students in some of our double degree programs, the UCL and the Peking U program. So if I can invite three students on stage, their personal details are on the screen. First to deal with Hong Kong U, Peking U, just to give you an idea of flavor of what the program actually entails from their perspective so that you have a, a user's profile, a consumer's profile. So first, uh, Ms. Jen and Ms. Pang, and uh, then we have followed by uh, someone for the, BB, for the uh, UCL program after that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Chen Yuexin, and I'm PKU, HKU year four, and I'm admitted from PKU. And this is Pang Poki, and she is admitted from Hong Kong U. And today we are going to introduce you to this program about a short introduction, our experience, and also how to make an application that excels yourself. And this is our structure. 
And first is the introduction to this program structure. As you may know, uh, this program is a five-year program with 2.5 years in each school. And you can see the timeline. Um, for, PK, uh, for Hong Kong U admitted students, you will spend uh, 2.5 years in Hong Kong U first. And then you will go to PKU for the remaining 2.5 years. Um, and after you complete this five-year program, you will get one uh, LB degree from Hong Kong U and the other from PKU. And um, I think the biggest characteristics for this program can be summarized as uh, faster learning and get more. Um, because as we know, to get an LB degree from each school, you need four years. And then four plus four is eight years. But under this program, you can get two LB degrees from two different jurisdictions just within five years. And this is much faster than you complete the LB degree and plus uh, LM degree overseas. Um, there are so many possibilities under this program. And I would like to mention one is to be a lawyer in Hong Kong um, because there will be more and more transactions that are cross borders and especially those involve China elements. There are many enterprises in China that would want to go listing in Hong Kong main board. So you need to better understand Chinese clients' needs and their pursuits. So um, I think the best way is to study Chinese law and then you can have a better insight. Um, when you complete Hong Kong LB, you can apply for PCIL and then get the legal qualification in Hong Kong. And when you complete the PKU LB, you can go to take the China bar examination and you can also have a very good command of legal Chinese. Um, and for the second part, I would like to introduce my experience in PK University. And I believe that it is very, very colorful. Um, first is we need to embrace the syllabus. Um, even though you may see it is quite challenging or uh, difficult for you to finish four-year workload within 2.5 years, but I would tell you that uh, it is not very intensive and the space is quite balanced and steady. Um, even though you have to complete all the core legal courses, but you have very high power to choose whatever you like, whether uh, law electives or whether free electives from any other faculties at your own interest. Uh, so I believe you will have a very uh, good combination of both fun and knowledge. Um, this program is law plus law uh, compared to other dual degree program, but our experience goes far beyond the textbook. There are so many outdoors and common sports in Peking University, and there are so many teams, and they will recruit new members every September, and you can find like-minded people around you. Um, most interestingly, you can also take internship experience in Central Beijing, and I can guarantee that the view from the office in Central Beijing is just as beautiful as the Victoria Harbor. Um, as we know that Hong Kong is a very all summer location. So I really recommend you to go to uh, Northern China to get another view of the whole territory. Um, on the left, this is the Wei Ming Lake in Peking University. And when it goes autumn, everything will be colorful. We have yellow leaves, green leaves, and orange leaves. And you can just take a photo there. And when it goes to winter, it will be snow. And you can sing to your friend, uh, do you want to make a snowman? And you can just make a snowman in front of the classroom. And it's very interesting. You can also paint on the snow. Uh, so I think it is a very unique and interesting experience to spend some years in Peking University. And I think you won't regret it if you join us. And let me pass my uh, microphone to my friend to introduce her experience in HKU. Yeah, so now I think perhaps I can share with you guys how my year one life in HKU was like. So basically, in terms of like studying in HKU, the learning mode in HKU will be that for each law course, you usually have one lecture and one tutorial. 
And so tutorials are usually uh, like a small class with around like 10 students, which is like a good opportunity for you to like have discussions with your classmates and also your tutors to clarify different concepts that you're like unsure after attending the lecture. And then as for the syllabus for this dual degree program, uh, usually in the first two years of your study, you will be completing some professional core courses uh, like criminal law, contract law. And then in the first semester of your year three, you will be choosing from a list of disciplinary electives. And also throughout the years, you have to complete two common core courses and also some basic university language courses. And of course, you, you guys might be concerned about like given such a packed syllabus, will you still be able to have time to do stuff other than just studying? And the answer is, of course. So I'm not sure if you guys know the term song zhong, which means actually to become an executive committee member in a certain culture society. And I think it's a big part of uni university culture in Hong Kong. So like in year one, I was actually an ex executive committee member of the music club of HKU. And during last year, I had a lot of opportunities in organizing different music related events and shows. And also uh, during my summer, I had a short internship at a local law firm. So during that period, I had I can have a taste of like how solicitor works in real life. And this will basically conclude my year one life. And now I think maybe we can move on to some like personal sharings on why did we apply to this program in the past. So like for me, basically, I think uh, the program is really attractive since that by completing this program, uh, it will allow you to master the law of two different jurisdictions like just within five years. Well, like normally it already would, would have taken four years for you to complete like an ordinary LLB program. And also, I think it's interesting that how you can study abroad and to have a taste of how studying in different cities feels like and to have like an exchange of culture and ideas. And one thing I learned from this program is I do think that you really need to have a strong time manage management ability so that uh, you, ha you can utilize your time and like strike a balance between your study and your time to have fun. And maybe we can now have Yuxing to share with us why she chose this program. Um, my story actually begins uh, as early as 2017. As you can see, this is my diary book when I back in high school. At that time, I was still hesitating about whether I go to Peking University or whether I go to Hong Kong because I love both. Uh, even though I attend both uh, summer school in each school, I can't still make my choice. Um, but I'm very lucky because uh, when I attack the Gaokao exam, and that is the first year for this program to recruit members. And I just step in and I would like to take this opportunity. Um, because I can fulfill my two dreams just in one program and it is faster and more colorful and just uh, it seems that it is my destiny. And to be more practical, uh, maybe I can get some cross-border legal study to facilitate my future career as a lawyer. And even though I don't want to be a lawyer, uh, this kind of multi-jurisdictional legal study can enhance my further uh, further career or further degree in some comparative law study. And I think my story will continue and uh, maybe your story will also continue as ours. And so now, last but not least, we would like to share a little bit of application tips for a student who might be interested in applying for the program. So basically, uh, to apply for the program, it requires you to submit two personal statements one in Chinese and one in English. And then as for um, the content of the personal statement, like um, I'm not an expert, but I can share with you guys what I did in my year was that uh, I included, of course, in my personal statement, my past experiences and achievements in high schools. And then I also mentioned like why did I choose this program and why do I think I'm capable or like a suitable candidate for the program? And lastly, also like what do I expect from completing this program. And then usually after you submit all your application materials, the, the school will shortlist students for an interview. And also to prepare for the interview, a little tips from me would be maybe before the interview, you can prepare for yourself a short self-introduction, which allow the interviewer to know more about like 
what kind of person you are. And then you can also prepare for some like come in interview questions. Like, and I think that uh, it's a good time for you like to review the personal statement you wrote beforehand because I think a lot of times the interviewer might ask you questions based on the personal statement you wrote. And also, lastly, a bonus would be that um, you can keep up with current affairs or like news so that you can have a sense of like what's happening around the world, especially in the legal field. And this would be our t application tips for you guys. And hope you guys will found our sharing today helpful. Thank you. So, so lastly, we have a sharing from uh, a student who's participating in the uh, UCL program. Faith, Faith Lee, I believe it is. So, Faith, it's your. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Oh, um, I, um, I will be using a PowerPoint. Oh, there, that's yeah, that's So, I'll just keep it as concise as possible. Um, but hi, everyone. My name is Faith. I'm a Year Three um, LLB student on the HQ UCL dual degree program. Um, so I just finished two years at UCL, and then I recently came back um, to Hong Kong to finish years three and four um, at HKU. Um, so before I start, just a quick show of hands. How many people have heard of this program before? So not a lot. Um, so I'll give everyone a brief overview and structure of the program first, and then I'll discuss um, the academic aspects of this program and why I personally chose this dual degree and also I'll share some aspects about student life. And finally, I'll talk about the application process and um, some tips I have for you guys. Um, so the HQ UCL dual degree program was first launched in 2016, and it's the first program of its kind in Hong Kong, the first um, law, UK law and Hong Kong law dual degree in Hong Kong. Um, it's a four-year program, so you spend years one and two at UCL, University College London, and then you spend years three and four at um, HKU. So at the end of the program, you're awarded two qualifying um, LLB degrees from UCL and HKU respectively, so you get an English law degree and you also get a Hong Kong law degree. Um, and apart from that, another unique feature um, of the dual degree is that there are compulsory pro bono placements, so at UCL, um, you have to um, sit with the um, UCL Center for Access to Justice and complete some pro bono projects. Um, whereas at HKU, you take part in the CLE, so clinical legal education, but I'll discuss that in more detail later on. Um, in terms of the academic um, structure of the program, at UCL, um, you take four full year modules each year. Um, so you take eight modules in total, and these are all core modules. So for instance, you study criminal law, contract law, um, public law and land law. Um, so once you've studied these modules at UCL, you won't be, the good news is you won't have to take them again at HKU, so there's no overlap in this respect. Um, whereas at HKU, um, you take 84 credits per year, so that would roughly be around seven courses per semester. So at HKU, the semester, um, the courses are usually one semester long, um, and these 80, 84 credits that you take per year would include the CLE, so clinical legal education, so in terms of teaching, um, the teaching would be delivered um, through lectures and tutorials, similarly to what's been mentioned previously, both at UCL and at HKU. So I wouldn't say there's a huge difference in terms of that. Um, however, um, personally, I do feel that the assessment methods at HKU are much more varied. So at UCL, for example, you complete the standard exams. Um, you also pan in coursework that maybe count for 30% of your final grade. Um, so coursework are just essays that you um, complete before the exam period, basically. Whereas at HKU, it's not as straightforward, and instead it's much more varied. Um, so for instance, apart from the final exam that you might have to take, that won't count for your final grade for a certain subject. For instance, you might have to do group presentations um, or blog posts or even videos, et cetera. So for me, because at HKU, you have to take something called Common Core, um, which is similar to an interdisciplinary um, liberal arts um, kind of course that you take outside of your law degree. So I chose Chinese medicine for that, which is 
kind of like a breath of fresh air. It's very different. Um, and for me, one of and for that course, one of the um, assessment methods was to create a short video about um, um, a Chinese medicine recipe. So that's something very interesting that I like to talk to people about. Um, so moving on from academics and more about my personal experience and background as to why I've chosen this dual degree. Um, so just a bit more about myself. I grew up in Hong Kong and I attended an international school for secondary school. Um, however, there are some people who apply for this dual degree that aren't from Hong Kong as well. Like it's, it's quite international. Um, there are people from Europe, there are people from, um, who study in the United Kingdom. So um, it's quite diverse, I would say. Um, and the reason why I've chosen this dual degree is obviously because you get two degrees in four years. So it's the same amount of time needed to um, complete a single LLB degree in Hong Kong. So to me, that's very um, good value for money. Um, <laughs> and also, practically speaking, you get the flexibility to qualify in either UK or Hong Kong. And especially now in the legal market, there's increasing demand for lawyers who are qualified in more than one jurisdiction. And so um, in this respect, it's a bit, um, it gives you a competitive advantage to do this dual degree. And some of you might be asking, why not do a three-year LLB degree instead in the UK and maybe come back um, to practice? Well, this is because you would have to take the PCLL conversion exams. I'm not sure if um, some of you are familiar, but essentially, just by way of background, um, in order to qualify as a lawyer in Hong Kong, you have to complete something called the PCLL, which is, um, a one-year course that you take after the LLB. Um, but then if you're a student who's studying law in the UK, um, you would have to take conversion exams before you're eligible to apply for the PCLL. Um, and those exams can be quite um, intense. So for me, um, I was glad that I didn't have to take these PCLL conversion exams. Um, and also you get the opportunity, like in terms of the things that you study, like the, the content, um, you get the opportunity to study English law, um, but while you're at UCL, you also get to study um, some EU law. Now, I know Brexit has happened, and um, there's still a lot of uncertainty, but um, as of now, because we're still in a transitional period, so UCL, students, UCL law students are still required to study EU law. And when you come back to HKU, you study not only Hong Kong law, but also you have a module called Introduction to Chinese Law, which is a very um, overview sort of perspective on um, PRC law. So I think this would really equip students with a very comparative perspective in terms of approaching um, what the law is and how the law should be, and this would really help with your studies as well. Um, and more importantly, I think exposure to these different jurisdictions and also just different um, also different cultures, that was something really valuable to me. And so speaking of different cultures as well, I also want to talk about um, the network that you get, because just by virtue of the fact that you're studying at two different universities, you get exposure to two different networks. So I'm still very close with a lot of my friends who are at UCL now. Um, so you really get the opportunity to broaden your horizons um, and become a more globally minded person. And I think finally, something that was a bit more personal to me was the dual degrees emphasis on pro bono work. Um, so in high school, I worked on a project that involved some refugee issues. And so I wanted to develop that interest further by um, learning more about that university. And because um, the dual degree program places so much emphasis on pro bono work, um, both at UCL and at HKU, um, I, felt that, um, I felt that it was a really good way for me to explore these interests. So now moving on to perhaps a more exciting aspect, which is student life. Obviously, I've only been at HKU for roughly two months, so I, um, I don't think I have a lot to share about um, HKU student life, but I do have a fuller picture of, um, of student life at UCL. So in terms of law-related extracurriculars, um, there's mooting competitions, which is basically you're presenting a, you're arguing a fictional case in a fictional court. Um, kind of similar to mock trial, not really, but quite similar if you enjoy that type of activity. There's also client interviewing, um, there's negotiations, competitions, and debate competitions as well. But outside of law, there's actually a lot more for you to explore. explore. Um, so for instance, um, UCL offers a wide variety of clubs and societies. There's honestly something for everyone. It doesn't have to be academic. Um, there's a society for every nationality there is, almost. There's also a Harry Potter society. There's a Taylor Swift society. Um, 
And I personally was involved with the Film Society, so I was on the committee. And an interesting fact that I like to tell people is that many years ago, Christopher Nolan was the president of the UCL Film Society. Um, and now he's gone on to direct um, really brilliant films like Interstellar, um, Inception, The Dark Knight. Um, and uh, I was also involved with badminton as well, so I played badminton every week. Um, and 